This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces are forces between molecules that determine physical properties such as the melting point and boiling point of a substance. Here we can see 3D models of five molecular compounds. From left to right, we have carbon dioxide, methane, chloromethane, ammonia, and water. In molecular compounds such as these, the atoms are bonded with covalent bonds. Covalent bonds are intramolecular forces, that is, forces that occur within a molecule. Intermolecular forces are forces between molecules. For example, there are intermolecular forces between carbon dioxide molecules, which are called London dispersion forces. Between polar molecules such as chloromethane, there are intermolecular forces called dipole-dipole forces. There are also intermolecular forces between molecules of ammonia. These intermolecular forces are called hydrogen bonds. So to summarize, intermolecular forces occur between molecules. In this video, we look at three types of intermolecular forces. They are London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole forces, and hydrogen bonding. In terms of strength, London dispersion forces are the weakest and hydrogen bonds are the strongest. London dispersion forces and dipole-dipole forces are collectively known as van der Waals forces. So we'll start by looking at London dispersion forces. London dispersion forces are caused by the movement of electrons within an atom or molecule. The constant motion of electrons within an atom or molecule can cause a temporary or instantaneous dipole. On the left, we can see an example of an instantaneous dipole within a molecule. At a certain point in time, the electrons move to one side of the molecule. So one side of the molecule has a partial negative charge and the other side of the molecule has a partial positive charge. It is this movement of electrons that causes an instantaneous dipole in the molecule. If a molecule with an instantaneous dipole comes into close proximity with another molecule, it can induce a dipole in this molecule. This is known as an induced dipole. London dispersion forces are made up of both instantaneous dipoles and induced dipoles. It's important to note that all atoms and molecules have London dispersion forces. This includes both polar and non-polar molecules. Next, we look at the effect of molar mass on the strength of London dispersion forces. In this table, we have the molar masses and boiling points of the group 17 elements. They are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. As we go down the group, we can see that the molar mass increases. The same is true for the boiling point. Fluorine has a boiling point of negative 188 degrees C. The boiling point then increases until we get to iodine, which has a boiling point of 193 degrees C. So from this we can see that as molar mass increases, the strength of the London dispersion forces between the molecules also increases. This results in an increased boiling point. The next type of intermolecular force is dipole-dipole forces. Dipole-dipole forces occur between polar molecules, that is, molecules that have a net dipole moment. HCl, which is hydrogen chloride, is a polar molecule. The chlorine atom has a partial negative charge, and the hydrogen atom has a partial positive charge. The dipole-dipole force is the electrostatic attraction between the partial positive charge on one molecule and the partial negative charge on another. So here we can see that the dipole-dipole force is between the partial negative charge on the chlorine atom and the partial positive charge on the hydrogen atom. So to summarize, dipole-dipole forces occur between polar molecules. However, it's important to remember that polar molecules also have London dispersion forces. In this table, we have four polar molecules, their molar masses, together with their dipole moments and their boiling points. These four compounds have been chosen as they have similar molar masses. By looking at their dipole moments, we can see the effect of the increasing dipole moment on the boiling point. So from this table, we can see as the dipole moment of the molecule increases, 
so does the strength of the dipole-dipole forces. This results in an increased boiling point. The last type of intermolecular force is hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding occurs when a hydrogen atom is bonded to either a nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine atom. Here we can see three examples of molecules that can form hydrogen bonds. From left to right we have H2O water, NH3 ammonia and HF which is hydrogen fluoride. In each of these molecules there is a hydrogen atom bonded to either an oxygen, nitrogen or fluorine atom. In addition to hydrogen bonds these molecules also have dipole-dipole forces and London dispersion forces. Next we will look at the formation of hydrogen bonds between water molecules. So from the diagram we can see that the hydrogen bond is formed between the partial positive charge on the hydrogen atom and the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom. Each water molecule can form four hydrogen bonds with four other water molecules. Two hydrogen bonds using the lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen atom and two hydrogen bonds between the two hydrogen atoms and the lone pairs of electrons on other water molecules. As we will see in the next slide, hydrogen bonds are the reason why water has a much higher boiling point compared to other molecules with similar molar masses. In this graph we can compare the boiling points of the group 14 and the group 16 hydrides. Starting with group 16 we can see that H2O has a much higher boiling point compared to the other group 16 hydrides. The big difference in boiling point is due to the fact that H2O can form hydrogen bonds between its molecules. The increasing boiling point between H2S and H2TE is due to the increase in molar mass. This results in stronger London dispersion forces between the molecules and an increase in the boiling point. Next we look at the trend in boiling point for the group 14 hydrides. Starting with methane which is a non-polar molecule and only has weak London dispersion forces between the molecules. So as we go from CH4 to SNH4 we can see that the boiling point increases. This is due to the increase in molar mass and the stronger London dispersion forces between the molecules. So let's end with a summary. In this table we have the type of molecule, the type of intermolecular forces and some examples. Starting with non-polar molecules which only have London dispersion forces. Examples include the diatomic molecules such as chlorine, hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen. Other examples include methane, and carbon tetrachloride. Next we have polar molecules which have London dispersion forces and dipole-dipole forces. Examples include hydrogen chloride, hydrogen cyanide, chloromethane and ethanol. Finally we have molecules with hydrogen bonded to either nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine. These types of molecules have London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole forces and hydrogen bonding. Examples include H2O, NH3, HF, C2H5OH which is ethanol and CH3COOH which is ethanoic acid.